Hello, my name is Steve Morpal, and today I'm going to be talking to you about plant-based. So, plant-based for me is the future of where food is going. There is a lot of talk about sustainability and the way that the food map has been changing. So suddenly, the world has opened up to the variety of ways to supplement, if you like, protein products or meat fish products for plant-based. So, I'm going to show you just a few little simple tricks you can do and a few simple ways to really streamline your menus, really look at your dietary ways of eating. So the first dish I'm going to do for you today is a togarashi udon broth. So this is a really simple way to just showcase how to get the flavours and the spices into a product without messing around too much. So the key to this is some good quality udon noodles. They're going to go into the water. And although the noodle noodles are probably, if you like, the staple and the base of the, uh, the actual product, it's the stock and it's the broth I want to talk to you about. So here, just on the side, what I've done is I've got some normal vegetable stock and then I've added some of these wonderful mushrooms. These are cochini because they're going to give that really robust, meaty flavour to the base of it. I've also added a little bit of coriander and then I've added some ginger and I've added some garlic and I'm going to add just a little bit of chilli. Then, just to give it a bit more of the flavour, we're going to add a little bit of the miso. A little bit of sesame oil. And then some soy to season it up. Now the whole idea is that this is going to get that lovely umami flavour going from the mushrooms. You're going to get a slight bit of heat from the actual uh, chilies. We're then going to freshen up just you know, a little bit of lime and then a little bit of fresh coriander. So I'm going to talk about a company called the Live Kindly Collective. They're somebody that us at Marfo use quite a lot. They are really good. They have opened up a number of different brands. So you see they've got one here called Like Meat, which is the chicken alternative. They've also got the lovely Like Meat smoked sausage, which is a uh, pea based. And then they've got a company called Oomph, which do soy based meats. But for now we're going to be using the like chicken bites purely simply because it has the same texture and the same feel as you would get from chicken, but obviously it's soy based. So one thing you always have to think about is if you are going to be doing vegan and plant based, you have to think about allergies. So if you are allergic and soy is one of your big problems, obviously sesame as well, you can substitute these ingredients. And again, if you wanted to go gluten free, you could use a gluten free noodle. So this chicken here, basically just see it's nice little pieces. It's got a nice bit of colour on it. All we're going to do is going to warm that through in the oven. With the world changing like it is, and with you know meat proteins and stuff being a bit of an issue, these companies are looking at this now innovation to try and make things look, feel, and taste exactly like real meats, and real fish. You know, it's groundbreaking in that respect. But also from your point of view. Although they're a bit more expensive sometimes than certain meats, they're going to make a massive difference on your carbon footprint, on your sustainability, and just helping going forward by taking these things away. So, basically, we've had the broth now sitting, going over. We've now got the chicken is in the oven. The noodles are a couple of minutes away. So, I'm going to talk to you about togarashi. It's a Japanese seven spice, and it's beautiful because what it gives is it gives lots of different flavours, lots of different, you've got a citrus note, you've got a real little bit of a fire, but not almost like a Szechuan pepper sort of you know, fire, but it makes a big, big difference. But what I want to do is I want to infuse this like you would do as if it was a tea. So we've got a wonderful little gadget here, which is a simple teapot and a simple little just strainer. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this in. You don't want too much because it may be a bit overpowering. So the stock now has been simmering away. As I said, you've got all the flavours in there. You've got the mushroom, you've got the ginger, you've got the chilli, you've got the miso, which gives that lovely little, sort of, again, it's got a meatier flavour, but it makes a big, big difference. And then I'm going to chop up some fresh coriander. I've got some Thai basil and I've got some mint, just to really freshen it up. Now you don't need to go mad with the chopping because you want the nice pieces in there. So I'm 
So I'm going to place the noodle into the base of the bowl. So I'm now going to build the bowl up. I'm going to take some of the cabbage. ginger that's just been julienned because although we put it into the stock and we've got that lovely flavour going in there you want almost the taste and the feel there's a big difference between ginger that's been cooked out and the stock you get a different flavour profile some of the chilli some little bits of garlic and sprinkle over some of the herbs and then get some of the chicken So the bowl is now finished, what we want to finish off is now the, the actual stock or the tea. So as I said, we've got the wonderful pachini mushrooms, you've got the soy, you've got uh, the sesame, you've got the miso in there. We've got this which is nori seaweed. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to shred some up and just put that in the bottom. So this is the sushi nori sheet, so what you're going to get is you're going to get that umami and that seaweed flavour again. Because don't forget, you know, this is all plant based, so there isn't anything in here that's really, you know, meat wise or anything. So you do have to be very careful in checking labels, so if you are using things like misos, you are using certain bases and sources, always double check the labels, because on things like kimchi, you know, it can have fish in. So, now we've got seaweed in the bottom, we've now got the togoroshi spice here. So I said, this is the Chinese seven spice. All we now do, infuse that into the teapot. Obviously it doesn't have to be for a teapot, you can just put the spice into the actual stock itself, or an easier way is to actually coat it on the, the actual plant-based protein. The other reason I'm using this is because it stops all the little bits of the spices from getting bits and gritty in the stock. Okay. So we've now got the plant-based chicken pieces, we've got our udon noodles, we've got our lovely fresh vegetables, chilli, ginger, garlic. I'm just squeezing on a little bit of lime just to give that freshness. Now for one of my probably favourite dishes, and the reason it's a favourite dish is because, again, it brings together a lot of different components. We're going to do something called a bibimbap, which translates roughly to mixing rice. This is, if you like, a leftovers dish, or a dish where you can bring components together. So being as I've got components from all the other dishes I've done today, we're going to do a little bit of a Korean bulgogi using the oomph. So bulgogi, if you don't know, is a Korean barbecue sauce. So it's basically soy, sugar, I use uh, an apple juice in mine. Um, it's garlic, it's ginger, and you make a really thick, dark sauce. Got some sesame in there as well. So what you're getting is that really, really, if you like, think about that American smoky barbecue flavor, you've got that, but sort of in an Asian style, and it is just superb. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some simple, just stir fry veg, again, just with a little bit of gochujang, which is a fermented bean paste. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix some flavors together. We're then gonna just garnish with some nice bit of texture. We've got some water chestnuts, 
and then we're going to use some of the veg. But one element I'm going to use because what I want is to bring that fruity element through is we're going to use mango. But we're just going to saute that down with a little bit of fresh chilli just to give it a different dimension. So this in essence is a nice rice bowl at the bottom and then do lots of little components around and the idea is that they would just mix it all together. So the first thing we're going to do is the tofu. So we are going to do a nice little dice. Exactly how we previously did. We're going to coat it in a mayonnaise just to bind it. Coat it in a little bit of the breadcrumb and we're just going to fry it off so we give that again different texture because again you've got the pulled pork style texture of the oomph which is obviously soy based. You've then got the lovely rice you then got crisp vegetables which we're going to stir fry but you need something else with just a crispy different texture so again just simply coat the pieces in the vegan mayonnaise so you've got the crispy smoked tofu and now I can place that into the fryer so I've got the fryer around 160 so just Take the pieces, shake off any excess pieces. Now you can just grill this, you don't have to uh, fry it, but I really like that crispy texture. For me, it's always about textures as well as flavour. Just fry that till it's golden brown. Now again, I tend to use a firmer tofu like the smoked one just because it's more robust and it holds up. Perfect, lovely golden brown. Crispy little pieces of tofu. Just tip them out onto a tray, just let that set up. So the bulgogi sauce now has been reducing and has been boiling away there. So it's a nice, thick sort of, if you like, glaze. That's the whole point. So as I said, you've got the soy in there, so you've got the saltiness, you've got chili in there because it just brings that heat through you've got some ginger and some garlic and then you've got the apple juice you can use pineapple juice now what we're going to do now is take this um, which is pieces of meat it's already been marinated in a slight uh coating but it just gives that pulled effect so i want this like korean bulgogi beef as such would be that same texture so that can just go in what i want to do is just coat that in that lovely, rich, dark. Just look at the shine of that, beautiful. You'd never actually know that that wasn't real meat. Really is good stuff, this oomph. As it cooks and as it heats up, it will start to break down so it will strand up. So if you wanted to do, say, a chipotle pulled uh, meat alternative, this oomph is fantastic for that. So we're going to leave that now just sitting in there, just ticking over. I'm just going to turn that down. Meanwhile, I'm going to heat the pan up and put just a little bit of sesame oil. Got some lovely pak choy. Now, for me, this comes in two parts. I like to chop this part up because it boils down like spinach. And then you've got that lovely crispy end here. There's that real that sort of fresh flavour. So, we're just going to shred this up. Going to slice this through into nice big pieces. So again, this is if you like, almost as I said, a use up. So you can put together whatever you like, as long as it goes together in regards to the concept of the dish. You know, don't be shy in regards of mixing and matching different different textures and different flavours. So we'll start just with the crispy bit here. And meanwhile, in the other pan, it's going to throw a little bit of ginger, a little bit of garlic, throw in just a little bit of onion, a little bit of carrot. So we don't want to cook it too much, you just want that nice, it's cooked, but there's still a bite to it, there's still a crunch to it. Okay. 
spring on this just going to give it a bit more freshness. I tend to use as much as I can of the onion, so the white and the green. But what we're going to do is just take a little bit of the gosh chain. So gosh chain is like a spicy chili bean paste. Just to bring that paste together. So that is a bit of water now, just going to coat that edge. So my rice is complete. So now I'm going to take the rice off. So that's the base. We've got the rice, we've got the bulgogi, and we're now just building the components and we will piece this together. Right now let's come down a little bit. We're going to add the leaves just so it's going to wilt a little bit. Now we're going to add the crunch. So into the bowl goggy, I'm just going to add some of the water chestnuts. Now I love the texture of water chestnuts. They are just beautiful with regards to that nice watery crunch, but they give a really good flavour as well. skin, soften it, cook it through, let it steam a little bit, then peel it, and just chop it. So it's almost if you like perfect umami dish because you're going to have so many different flavours going on hopefully bringing it all together so again remember we're not overcooking we're not completely cooking over you want texture you want colour you want some nice Christmas stay there so so I don't usually mix and match things too much, but mango for me is a wonderful product. And for me, because you've got the fruitiness within the bulgogi, it, if you put fruit with it, either it's a pineapple or in this case, mango, for me, it just really lifts it. So we've got some mango, we're just gonna dice into nice cubes. We're then gonna take some chili. Now it's up to you how hot you want it. This is quite a large chilli, so it won't be too, too hot. Let's have the fresh coriander. So we're going to take some of the agave. Just a touch, because there's enough sweetness within the mango, you don't need any more. Just see it's just starting to bubble. Throw in your mango. Throw in your chili and coriander. Okay, so now we have our components, we can build our bibimbap. So as we said, bibimbap, rice based dish, means rice mixing. So generous spoon of rice just in the bottom of your bowl. chain vegetables. A nice sweet pepper and sauteed 
soy bok choy. That wonderful bok oh, is sweet. Barbecue flavoured oomph with the lovely texture of the water chestnuts. And then finish with our sweetened mango, chilli, coriander and agave. And there we have a nice simple but effective a bulgogi oomph bibimbap. Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to go for a really, really simple dish. This dish for me is a real comfort food, but at the same time can be really quite a stylish dish. So we're going to do something called bao buns. These are apparently a steamed bun, which is basically just 500 grams of flour, about 200 grams of water, seven grams of freeze-dried yeast, and then seven grams of sugar, three grams of salt. Literally, that's your base mixture. You bring your water and your yeast up to round about sort of blood temperature, and then you add your flour, your salt, and your sugar in together, and then you add that, mix it, make it into a dough. Now, because I don't like to do things conventionally, so rather than do plain, I've gone for two types. I've gone for saffron, so basically, in the water I put some strands of saffron just to give it that yellow colour, but also I like the fact that it flecks the yellow. I've then made this, I've then proved it a little bit, so you see it's all bobbly, light and airy, ready to be rolled out for the second proof. The second one I've done can be a bit controversial, but again, really is on trend my own, and this is charcoal. So, I've had some activated charcoal powder. All I've done is I've added that to the water, and then I put that into the flour with the yeast and the uh, salt and the sugar. I haven't needed it too much, and I haven't gone for a really, really dark one. I really like that motility effect. So, you basically, literally, it's an all-in-one method, if you like, mix it all together, leave it somewhere warm to prove, so it puffs up, double in size, and then you're ready to do the next stage. So for this, you need a rolling pin, a little bit of flour, and then all you're going to do is roll it into the size balls that you require, making sure they're even. So, because it's already been proved once, by the time we finish rolling it, shaping it, rolling it out again, it's going to need a second proof. So what I've done is, I've placed this oven, can be low, low temperature, so I set it around 35, I'm going to cover them over and just leave them for a few minutes, just to puff up before we put them into the steamer. I'm classically steaming as you would do in a bamboo basket, just like the oil, water underneath, and we're done. So, we've got turmeric ones, and then I'll repeat the process for the, um, the charcoal ones. So I said, a little bit of flour, just on your board. Roll it round, make it smooth. And then start to push down my hand. So you want to make it, you think about it, it's gonna puff up double in size. So you want it to be able to sit in the palm of your hand quite nicely. Just gentle, don't be too rough with it. There you go, that's about right. Then all I now do, take a little bit of oil and just rub it on one side. Now what this is gonna do is when you fold it over, and it steams, it's going to stop it from sticking so that you'll get that open bun effect. So same again, just working it around. Try not to have too much flour on the outside because what you'll find is it will end up making a crust. Okay, it's a little bit of oil. Fold it over. Okay. 
Now I'm going to repeat that process for these and for the charcoal bunts and then I'll come back to you. So that's the last of the bunts now, fold that one over. Done. Now I'm just going to cover it with a little bit of glue here, just to stop any initial drying out. And I'm going to place them in this oven at 35 degrees C, so it's literally just warm. Just to let them prove up. Okay, so while my saffron and charcoal buns are proven in the oven, I'm now going to work on the accompaniment. So we're going to have the nice steam light buns, we're then going to have the filling which is going to be the gosh chain made with the chicken and with the oomph, so this is the like meat chicken and this is obviously the oomph, both from the uh, Live Kindly Collective group. So basically we're going to make a coleslaw, but instead of being a, if you like, creamy mayonnaise based one, we want to go with something a little bit more spicy and a little bit slightly different. So this time I've got kimchi. Now be very careful because a lot of kimchi is actually not vegan or vegetarian because they will put fish sauce or they will have a fish derivative in there. So you have to really make sure that you look at your labels. So if anything to do with plant-based, you have to make sure that you're double checking everything. So this is just literally fermented cabbage and onion. And so it's just got nothing more than just the chili and the spices and the vinegar and the sauce. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a dressing. So I'm gonna puree this down. So literally in a food processor. So the kimchi's in, all we're gonna do now is just blend it. That might make a bit of noise. blended it into a paste. So now what we're ready to do is So, like you would do with a normal classic slaw, we're going to put cabbage, So the idea being that hopefully the kimchi will start to break down and soften the actual veg. The reason we haven't gone for a full kimchi slaw, if you like, or a full kimchi as garnish, because it would be far too potent, it'd be far too strong. So what we want is that freshness of the cabbage, the carrot, the onion, with just that hint and the flavor of the kimchi. So, while that's proving in the oven for the buns, this is now going to be just marinating for a further few minutes. We can then get started on the actual gosh chamber. So now I'm going to talk about the gosh chamber. So you already know about the plant-based proteins. So like I said, we've got the chicken, and then we've got this oomph, which is like a, a pulled pork. What we're gonna use now is one of my favorite ingredients at the moment. This is gochujang. So basically this is a, if you like, a chili and uh, pepper paste made with uh, fermented soya bean and uh, glutinous rice. And what it makes is it makes this really sort of sweet and savory, spicy um, sauce, if you like. So what it needs is it needs a bit of extra sweetness. So we've got some agave again, we've got some sesame, and I've got just a bit of water. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this down, we're gonna sweeten it up, we're gonna make a nice little sticky mix. We're then gonna coat that on the two, and then we're just gonna coat them with a little bit of seeds. So the first thing we'll do, I'm gonna throw in some water. 
just to the down the paste. I'm then going to throw in some ginger and some garlic, just to start to get those flavours to come out. You can already smell that ginger. So you get this lovely vibrant red and orange sort of looking paste. Then we're going to add some garbage just for the sweetness. And a bit of sesame oil. So I'm just going to leave that now for a few seconds just to bubble over. It's got a lovely shine there from the agave. You can really smell that, really strong. And it's going to turn up just a little bit so it bubbles up just a bit more, reduce it. And then what we'll do is we will place the chicken, the fake chicken, and the fake pork into here. It's going to bind it over in the goss chain and then coat it with the spices. And then we're going to leave that just for a sec. We've got the kimchi slaw. Hopefully the buns will then be ready to uh, remove from the prover from the steam. So again, for me, if you are going to do plant-based or you're going to do any sort of cuisine, especially in these days, there is so much variety out there. But re using really punchy, really, you know, different flavours, things that really bring a dimension that's different to your food. You can really have a look. It doesn't have to just be like I've done today, which is the Japanese and the Korean. You know, there is a lot to be said for Indian, South American, even some European. And certainly, you know, if you're looking at Scandinavia, there is so much out there to be done, and you can really make things sing. It doesn't have to be a protein. Okay, perfect. And so now, split that between the two. Throw into the chicken. So now the kimchi slaw is done, we've also got the gotcha chang mixes ready and warming through. We've got to take the bao buns out now and steam them. Oh, so there you go, yes. So you see, they've doubled up in size. They look really, really good. Now what you've got to do is be really careful because these, you'll knock the air out of them. They've just proven up, they're very, very delicate. So what I'm going to do now, these in the steaming basket and steam them. Okay, so these have now been proof in the cooking just for another 10 minutes. Oh wow, look at them. Perfect. Look at that. Covered in size and open up. Amazing. So Another round of this, and then we're ready to play. So there we have our two sets of buns. We've got the lovely saffron, and look at that, charcoal. So now we're gonna fill them and finish them off. So first up, just get some of the seed mix. Some of the lovely gotcha chain oomph.
chicken one. Lovely, sweet and savoury and spicy gochujang mix with a nice little hot and sour slaw with those lovely, just light and fluffy. Then we have simple little charcoal and saffron bao buns with gochujang and a kimchi slaw.